is worthy of all praise. Our heart will sing, how great is our God. How great is our God. Sing with me, how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. How many of you want to see how great God is in these last days? Come on, church, let's worship Him. Oh, sing with me, how great is our God. And all will see how great, how great is our God. Jesus, we love you. He is the name, name above all names. He is worthy of all praise. And my heart will sing how great is our God. Oh, how great is our God. Sing with me how great is our God. We'll see how great, how great is our God. Hallelujah, Lord. We're here to worship you today because of your greatness. Lord, you are a good, good Father. You are great and mighty King. Lord, you are our Savior, our friend. And less, Lord... You are our judge. Lord, in these last days when we see love growing cold, easily offended, hatred of one another, Lord God, when we see famines, when we see pestilence, when we see natural disasters, when we see nation rising against nation, and Lord, that can include countries, and unfortunately, Lord, that can include even races. But, Lord, we all bleed red. Lord, we're all created in your image. And we still praise you in these days, Lord. We still lift up your wonderful name because you are King Jesus. Lord, we love you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, be free to move in this place today as your children. Lift up the wonderful name of Jesus. Fall down upon us. Rise up within us. And Holy Ghost, move forth in this place today. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. You give life. You are love. You bring light to the darkness. You give hope. You restore every heart that is broken. You give hope, you restore every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord. It's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out our praise. Pour out our praise, it's your breath in our lungs, so we pour out Darkness, Lord, you, you give, give hope. hope, you restore every heart that is broken. Great are you, Lord, it's your breath in our lungs. So we pour out our praise, pour out our praise, it's your breath in our lungs. So we So we pour out our praise, pour out our praise, 
out your breath in our lives. So we pour out our praise to you. Church, I know it's Labor Day. I know there's a lot going on in our lives. But aren't you glad our Lord gives us hope? Aren't you glad he brings light to darkness? Hallelujah. Aren't you glad his breath? You know what God did? He breathed life into Adam. Right? That's what scripture says in Genesis 2. He breathed life. God's breath became Adam's breath in his lungs. Whose breath is in our lungs today? Not ours. It's God. God breathed life into us. Praise the Lord. It is your breath. It is your breath in our lungs. So what are we going to do with that breath? Sit there and just breathe it in? Come on, church, let's lift up the wonderful name of Jesus. He is worthy. It is your breath, and we pour out our praise. We pour out our praise unto the Lord. I don't know what you come to do, but I come to praise the wonderful name of Jesus Christ, my Lord and my Savior. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In our lives, so we pour out our praise, pour out our praise at your breath. In our lives, so we pour out our praise to you only at your breath. In our lives, we love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Hallelujah. We love you, Lord. Glory to God. Glory to God. It's only you, Lord. It's only you, Lord. Are you, Lord? All the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. And all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will say, Great are you, Lord. And all the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will say, Great are you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah. Run for me. Pray for me. Church, let's give God some praise for his greatness. Hallelujah. Great are you, Lord. Lord God, we praise you in Rumford, Maine this morning. We praise you, Lord. These, this breath in our lungs is not going to be used to complain. It's not going to be used, Lord God, to, to criticize. The breath in our lungs right now is going to be used to praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. For you are worthy to be praised hallelujah glory to god glory to god hallelujah all the earth will shout your praise our hearts will cry these bones will sing great are you lord all the earth will shout your praise our hearts will Bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. All the earth will shout your praise. Our hearts will cry. These bones will sing. Great are you, Lord. 
Hallelujah. Let's praise him, church. He is worthy. Put your hands together and give God praise. Hallelujah. He is worthy to be praised. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Church football season starts Thursday night. Some of you will be yelling at your TV. I don't know about you. I want to praise the wonderful name of Jesus. He is so awesome. He is so awesome. Praise there is an Lord. endless song that echoes in my soul. I hear the music ring. Yes, Lord. And though the storms may come, I'm yes. holding on to the rock I cling. Yes. How can I keep from singing your praise? Yes, How can I ever Lord. say enough? Yes, How Lord. amazing is your love? Yes, How can Jesus. I keep from shouting your name? Yes, Jesus. I know I'm loved by the king. And Hallelujah. it makes my heart want to sing. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. There is an endless song that goes in my soul. I hear the music ring. And though the storms may come, I am holding on to the rock how clean. How can I keep from singing? say enough how amazing is your love how can i keep from shouting your name jesus we love you loved by the king and it makes my heart want to see i will lift my eyes in the darkest night for I know my Savior lives. And I will walk with you, knowing you'll see me through. Thank you, Lord. And I'll sing the songs you give. How can I keep from singing your praise? How can I ever say enough? How amazing is your love? How can I keep from shouting your name? Jesus, I know I am loved by the King, and it makes my heart want to sing. How can I keep from singing your singing your praise, Lord? How can I ever say enough? How amazing is your love, yes, Lord. How can I keep from shouting your name? Jesus, I know I am loved by the King, and it makes my heart want to sing. Here's why, church. I can sing in the troubled times and sing when I win. I can sing when I lose my step and fall down again. I can sing because you pick me up. And I'll sing because you're there. I can sing because you hear me, Lord, when I call to you in prayer. I can sing with my last breath. And I'll sing for I know. And I'll sing with the angels and the saints around the throne. Oh, how can I keep from singing your voice in your praise? How can I ever say enough? How amazing is your love? How can I keep from shouting your name? Jesus, Jesus we love you. I know I am loved by the King, and it makes my heart want to see. Lord God, right now there are people coming. I can see by looking on faces. Lord, I can see some are tired, some are frustrated, some may want to be somewhere else. Some have different storms they're going through. But Lord, wherever we are, we must praise you. Lord, I can't get up here. Mary can't get up here. Nobody can get up here and lead worship a different way. Lord, but your spirit is here. And we're created to worship you. We are created to praise you. Even in the storms of life. 
even when we don't feel like, Lord, that's what this song was, was written about, the history behind this song. How can I not praise my Lord? He has been so good to me. Lord, you're our Savior. Lord, in this place right now, our bishops, our deacons, our leaders, our teachers, our mature Christians, as well as others who were just baptized a month ago. But, Lord, there are believers in here. And I pray, believers, will use the breath in their lungs to declare your majesty. For, Lord, if we don't declare your majesty, who's going to do it? An unbeliever? Just people that are on the mountaintops? Lord, in these last days, there's not going to be a lot of mountaintop experiences outside of with you. So we might as well praise you in this house right now. How can we not praise you, Lord? You are awesome. You are Lord. You are majesty. You're the soon and coming king. You're our blessed hope in these last days. And we praise you, Lord. Better is one day in your courts than a thousand elsewhere. Lord, this is your day. Lord, Dad, this is a day set apart to worship you. So I pray every bishop, every deacon, every trustee, every leader, every teacher, every Christian, whether they've been serving you for years or one month or one day or even one hour, Lord, may our voices become one in praise unto thee. For, Lord God, you are King of kings and Lord of lords, and we praise your name, Lord. We praise your name. You are so awesome. You are so awesome. You are so awesome. You are so awesome. Hallelujah. And we love you, Jesus. We love you, Jesus. And, Lord, if there is someone, Lord God, who's got a pacifier in their mouth because they can't praise you for whatever reason, Lord, I pray they just walk out and will come to this altar, Lord, and let you minister to their soul. Right now, Lord, let you minister to them so that that worship can be restored. Lord God, just as Zacharias, John the Baptist's father, could not talk. Maybe there's someone here who feels like they can't praise. Maybe because of they did, maybe because they lacked faith or they were disobedient or they made a mistake. Lord, just as Zacharias, his voice was restored. His voice was restored. He could praise you with his tongue. He could rejoice in the birth of his son. For, Lord, that he had no children. Elizabeth had no children until John, Jesus' cousin, the forerunner of the Messiah. And then he got his praise on. So, Lord, if there's somebody here, so wherever we are, we should be praising you. Or we're going to let you fix us, Lord, from the depths of our soul so we can praise you again. And declare your majesty here right now in this time of worship. Hallelujah. We shout to Glory to God. Oh, we shout to the Lord, my Jesus, my Savior, Lord. There is none like Hallelujah. you. All of my days, Hallelujah. I want to praise the wonders yes, of your mighty Lord, love. All of my days. You are my comfort. Good days you and are bad, my Lord. shelter. You Hallelujah. are my power of refuge Hallelujah. and strength. Hallelujah. Breath, Hallelujah. Let all that I am. Praise the Lord. Ever cease to praise the Lord. You're my Jesus, my Savior, oh Lord, there is none like you. All of my days, I want to praise the wonders of your mighty love. You're my comfort, my shelter, a tower of friends. Strength. Yes, you are, Lord. Let every breath, all that I am, and never cease to worship you. I shout to the Lord, all the earth, let us see a power and majesty. Praise to the King. The mountains bow down and the seas will roar at the sound of your name. name of Jesus. I sing for joy at the work of your hands. Forever I love you, forever I stand. Nothing compares to the promise I have. In you, oh, shout to the Lord, all the earth, let 
blessing. Power and majesty, praise to my King. Mountains bow down and the seas will roar at the sound of your name. I sing for joy at the work of your hands. Forever I love you, forever I stand. Nothing compares to the promise I have in you. Shout to the Lord, all the earth, earth let, us, let sing. us sing. Power and majesty, praise to the King. Mountains bow down and the seas will roar at the sound of your name. I sing for joy at the work of your hands. Forever I love you, forever I'll stand. Nothing compares to the promise I have. In you. Hallelujah. Glory. Glory to God. Let's give him praise, church. Glory. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Church, God's been so good to us. He's been so good to us. Lord, we rejoice in your blessings upon us as a nation. We rejoice, Lord God. We rejoice, Lord, that this week the survival rate of COVID is, is 97% plus. Lord God, we rejoice. Hallelujah. Lord God, that across the country, that, Lord God, that several protests were canceled, which means several lives were saved. Lord God, we thank you, Lord, for the provision. Lord God, the blessing that came in. Lord God, that will pay for half of the roof above us right now. Lord God, you took care of that. Lord, you're a good, good father. Lord God, we thank you for the health that we have. Praise the Lord. We thank you, Lord, for the goodness and the grace and your mercy that you bestow upon us. Lord, you love us even when we fail you. Oh, precious Jesus, you are so good. Lord God, what was $30,000 to you when you own everything? Lord God, you are so awesome. What an amazing God we serve, church. What an amazing God we serve. Hallelujah. He's so awesome. So much for us to praise him for. Even when you don't think about salvation, he's been good to us. Praise the Lord. We're going to change speeds a little bit because sometimes... You know, you, you, we sing the quiet, lay our burdens down before God songs, right? And then other times, you know, I, I trust that after three, lay our burdens down before God songs. That's right. But now we're ready to praise. Amen. So we're going to sing what I was going to do for offering. And hey, Chloe, I'll probably flip around somewhere. You never know what I'm going to do next. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing. Yes, I will sing. Lord. And with my yes. mouth will I make known Hallelujah. his faithfulness. Yes. Yes. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing. I will yeah, put those hands together. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord. And with my mouth will I make known thy faithfulness, thy faithfulness. And with my mouth will I make known thy faithfulness to all generations i will sing of the mercies of the lord forever i will sing of the mercies of the lord i will sing of the mercies of the lord forever i will sing i will sing I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing of the mercies of the Yes, we will, church. And with my mouth will I make known thy faithfulness, thy faithfulness. And with my mouth will I make known thy faithfulness.
promise to all generations. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord. And with my mouth will I make known thy faithfulness. Thy faithfulness. And with my mouth will I make known thy faithfulness to all generations. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. I will sing of the mercies of the Lord. Hallelujah. God is good, church. God is good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Honey, let's close with praise him. We're going to sing an old Negro spiritual. Praise him in the morning. Praise him in the noontime. Praise him when the sun goes down. Praise the Lord. I don't think it's in the book. Oh, well. Amen. Let's what try to sing What difference does that make? <laughs> yeah. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him in the morning. Praise him in the noontime. Come on, guys. Praise him. Praise Him, I will praise Him when the sun goes down. I'll serve Him, serve Him, yes, I'll serve Him. I will serve Him in the morning, serve Him in the noon. Serve Him, serve Him, I will serve Him when the sun goes down. I will love Him, love Him, yes, I love Him. I will love Him in the morning, love Him in the noon. Love him, love him, I will love him when the sun goes down. He is Jesus, he is Jesus, Jesus, oh, he's Jesus in the morning, Jesus in the noontime, Jesus, oh, Jesus, he is Jesus when the sun goes down. I will praise him, praise him, yes, I'll praise him, I will praise him in the morning. Praise him in the noontime, praise him, praise him. I will praise him when, when the, the sun goes, goes down. When the sun goes down. Hallelujah. Let's give the Lord one more hand clap offering. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. God is good. Praise him all day long. Praise the Lord. God is good. We're going to take up our tithe and offering, and I just, as I just gave God thanks for, we had a, praise the Lord, a financial donation of over $13,000 to pay for the roof uh, this week. Praise God. God is good. It's always fun to go get the mail around here. God takes care of us in the tithes and offerings, and uh, God is God is so good. God is so good, and, and um, so... Uh, I just want to give God praise uh, for that. But as we, this is the first Sunday of the month. It's Mission Sunday. And, uh, of course, so we'll have our faith promises and tithes and offering in this uh, little blue container. is for Compassion Ministry. And we're going to be uh, trying to continue to share the love of Christ with those in need in our community. Father God, bless us offering as we give. We thank you again, Lord, for the wonderful donation, uh, Lord, this week. You're so good. I've seen it, Lord, for 17 years. It shouldn't surprise me, Lord, and it shouldn't surprise this congregation. Lord, we saw you give $100,000 for the purchase of this building. 13000 Lord, and 30000 for the repair of the replacement of the roof. Lord, every time there's a need, you come through because you're a good, good father. Lord, bless those that give today. May we give cheerfully. May we give sacrificially. May we give faithfully according to the word of God, your word. And, Lord, bless those that give of their tithe and offering today. In Jesus' name, amen. So as we sing this song, please, if you haven't already, bring your offering. Sing, 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 and make music with the heavens. We will sing, sing, sing. Oh, grateful that you hear us when we shout your praise. Lift high the name of Jesus. Oh, 
sing, 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 and make music with the heavens. We will sing, sing, sing. Grateful that you hear us when we shout your praise. Lift high the name of Jesus. I make music with the heavens, we will sing, sing, sing. Grateful that you hear us when we shout your praise. Lift high the name of Jesus. We will sing, sing, sing. And make music with the heavens, we will sing, sing, sing. Grateful that you hear us when we shout your praise. Lift high the name of Jesus. One more time, church. Let's give the Lord a hand clap offering. Hallelujah. God is good. Lift high the name of Jesus. Father God, have your way the remainder of this service, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Troy, my brother, can you help me and uh, take this over with you? Or I see Miss Crystal is not here. She usually does that. And just put that away. And uh, thank you, brother. I appreciate that. She must be helping Miss Brandy upstairs. Yes. She might have sent me a message, but I didn't, haven't looked at my phone. Well, praise the Lord. A couple of announcements here before we get into the word. Inside your bulletin are a couple of things. Number one, we are looking to update our directory uh, this year. And so if you would uh, like to give us your information and update your information, uh, that would be great. By turning this in, this lets us know that you want to be in the directory. If you want to be in the directory and there's things you don't want to be posted in the directory, just fill, leave it blank and that'll tell us that we don't want that particular part of your information. Uh, maybe you want just your email but not your phone number. Or maybe you want your phone number but not the address. Maybe you want everything but your birthday. I don't know, but uh, just leave that part uh, blank. We would let, You can just give this to... Uh, Alicia or put it back in the offering next time you're here uh, that would be great okay and um, that'll be wonderful and uh, and it would be helpful too don't don't just say well pastor's got my number well that's true but it'll be a lot easier if Alicia has these rather than come to me for to ask me if I've got this number or that number okay so it would really be helpful uh, for us if you would do that plus I'm teaching school two days a week now Wednesday and Friday so It'll be easier for Alicia if you do that. That'll be great. Uh, also, guys, in your bulletin is a connect card. If you have a prayer need or you want us to connect with you for some reason, maybe you you would like a home visit or uh, maybe uh, some, you would like uh, maybe communion for an elderly loved one, whatever it might be, uh, you can turn the connect card into me, Alicia, or put it in the, the offering uh, container as well, um, and we will follow up with that um, as well. And then lastly, today is Mission Sunday and BGMC and Speed of Light. And if you're an adult here, and I know we don't see Miss Brandy on Sunday mornings because she's upstairs, you can either just write a check and just mark it BGMC. You can also put your Buddy Barrel money in Buddy Barrel out in front of the ark if you want to do that. Um, either way, uh, we'll make sure it gets into the right place, okay, because she's not here uh, doesn't mean you, 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 can, you can't give. You can certainly give through Buddy Barrel out there or through the regular offering. Um, that would be great. Or if you come Sunday nights, Brandy's down here, you can give it to her then if you want to do it uh, that way. Inside your bulletin, uh, there is the newest uh, true stories of the mission field. If you want to take a look, a little pamphlet that's there. Uh, it's pretty a pretty good little story in here about spiritual warfare and what's going on. Uh, in the continent of Africa and other places. And uh, so this is, this is pretty cool. Uh, the different enemies that we don't often think that our, an enemy in America is a 30-foot python, okay? We don't often think, or a you know, 35-foot king cobra. We don't often think about that kind of stuff. But there are cultures in the world 
that that do. And so uh, we have missionaries there, and these true stories or links to the other true stories are really cool. So please take time to look through this pamphlet. Uh, maybe put it on your missions wall or if you have a prayer closet and to remind you to pray for the persecuted church or the those uh, living in adverse uh, circumstances around the world uh, would be would be wonderful. I bring greetings from the Gavins, um, uh, Joe and Rachel Gavin. If you know, they're minute missionaries over in Chi Alpha University of Vermont in South Burlington, right on the New York border uh, over there. And so they're returning to school and praise God with light for the lost money, speed to light money. Uh, they were able to uh, to have monies for uh, the freshman orientation and all that kind of stuff as college gets going. Uh, they're raring to go over there, which is pretty, uh, pretty exciting. And in Vermont, uh, they can have 50% of capacity there. Here in Maine, we can only have 50 people. In Vermont, gymnasiums and churches can have 50% of capacity. So if the gym there at the University of Vermont houses you know, 5,000 people, they can have 2,500 in the facility. And, you know, so it's exciting what God's doing over in Vermont. And uh, so please continue to pray for them. Uh, Brandy did put some new uh, missions letters on the missions board. If you want to check that out, what's going on with John Flood, what's going on with Rachel Mullins down in Honduras, um, Mike Chase in Taiwan, uh, different. uh, uh, Please take time to read those. Um, And you'll be encouraged as well as to know what the prayer needs are uh, for our uh, missionaries. All right, so uh, praise the Lord. Um, Tonight we'll be back at it, 5 p.m. for men's and women's group. Guys, we're upstairs. Love to have you guys uh, come, ladies. You're down here and um, in the Good News Center. as we The the bonds that we're making with the guys is pretty cool. And uh, so we'd love to have you if you want to join us tonight. And the evening service will be at 6. I think that's it. All right. Praise the Lord. It is you guys. Are you ready for God's word today? Amen. Praise the Lord. My brother Zach is going to come if you guys would stand for the reading of God's word today. And then we're going to have an object lesson. Good morning. We're going to look at two different portions of Scripture today. Uh, the first one, we're going to come out of Genesis chapter 1, verses 3 through 5. Then God said, Let there be light, and there was light. And God saw the light, that it was good. And God divided the light from the darkness. God, God called the light day, and the darkness he called night. So the evening and the morning were the first day. The second portion we're going to look at is Mark chapter 2, verses 23 through 28. Now it happened that he went through the grain fields on the Sabbath, and as they went, his disciples began to pluck the heads of grain. And the Pharisee said to him, Look, why do they do what is not lawful on the Sabbath? But he said to them, Have you never read what David did when he was in need and hungry, he and those with him, how he went into the house of God in the days of Abiathar, the high priest, and ate the showbread, which is not lawful to eat except for the priests, and also gave some to those who were with him. And he said to them, The Sabbath was made for man, and not man for the Sabbath. Therefore, the Son of Man is also Lord of the Sabbath. Father God, we thank you so much for your goodness and your faithfulness to each and every one of us. If there's anything, God, that we can stand on today, it is your faithfulness. Your word says when we are faithless, you remain faithful, God. And how often do we need that within our lives, Father? Please teach us, enlarge our capacities to receive this morning, God. Open our hearts to receive your word with gladness, Father. And may it take root in good, fertile soil. Here this morning, I pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you, brother. Praise the Lord. As he was speaking, I couldn't help but, and praying, I should say, I couldn't help be encouraged by the fact that God wants to do something amazing in this place today. 
All right, but before we get to this object lesson, did the bulletins get passed out? I see him sitting in that chair, and Ted's not here. Does everyone have one? Oh, good, so they did get passed out, because Troy's over there, and he's usually the one that backs up, but he's over there, and that's sitting there, and I'm thinking it looks like a stack of bulletins. Oh, good, brother, you're going double duty. Thank you very much. All right, well, guys, today is Labor Day Sunday, all right, and Labor Day is a federal holiday that is supposed to be set aside because we're, we're such a hard-working society in a day um, that was, this holiday was formed out of our Judeo-Christian principle of rest and a, and, a, and a Sabbath and a break. And so therefore, the first, uh, sun, the first Monday in uh, September, which comes very late this year, the latest it can come, is tomorrow, September 7th, okay, is Labor Day where it is an extra day for us to rest. And every year that I've been pastor here, 17 years, this is the 18th Labor Day. It started on, I started August 10, 2003. So this is the 18th Labor Day and 18th sermon I've preached on rest and preached on the importance of the Sabbath or the, the importance of resting in the Lord, the importance of why this is so significant, why this is so important, and why the fourth commandment, which is to honor the Sabbath and keep it holy, is so, for, so important for us as uh, Christians. But I'm going to do something different today. I'm not typically an object type of person. I don't have a lot of science, you know, skill in me. But with this COVID thing, I've never researched and looked at more science than I ever have in the last six months. All right. However, except when I was in college, I did put some effort into the classes. All right. But I'm going to give an object lesson here. All right. And in this jar is a jar of rocks. And it's crammed with rocks, okay? And I'm going to take the top off so that you guys know this is not an illusion because I'm not a scientist and I'm definitely not a magician either. All right, so this jar is, is filled. You cannot put any more rocks of the same size, which is what I have in this jar. And this is just a smaller jar with the same type of rocks and they're not going to be able to fit in here, all right? Uh, Dawson, would you agree, brother, that that is filled to the top? You're here in the front row, and I could not cram the rocks this size in there. All right? It's not going to happen. All right? However, does this mean that the jar is full? If I get real trick, real tricky, and now I move to a smaller jar, and I take the top off, Hannah helped me with this yesterday, by the way. And then I take these little pebbles. I can drop them in, can I not? I can begin to fill up the empty spots that a, big ro a bigger rock would not fit into, but I can put these smaller rocks in here. Even all of those in this smaller jar Wow, the top is really full. But is it full? I can get real creative and say, Sunshine, we're going to go out to your horse arena out there, and I need you to go get a jar of sand. And she did. And then the sand begins to fall through the cracks. And it begins to even sift to the bottom. I hope the vacuum cleaner works. Sifts to the bottom, slowly moving down through. But as you can see, even with half of this jar or a third of this jar gone, there's still a little room in here, right? It's still not full. So let's just pretend for the sake of time and for cleanliness that all this sand is in here because it takes a while for sand to sift, especially since the top is, you see that? Oh, it's moving, it's even moving faster, all right? Mary said, are you going to rehearse this before you do it? And I am. I'm going to do it in front of 30 people, going to rehearse it. All right. So now it's moving in there. It's actually going to take more sand than I thought it would. I should have used a bigger jar. It's 
So, with all that said, is it full to where I can just close it up and move on? No. It's not. I might get real sly and say, I now have room for a little water in here because this sand with water is going to become messy. But we all know if you've ever had a leaky roof like we had here at the church, water will always find a place to run. Wow. Look at that science experiment. Now, we put the top on it. So after it looked like it was full, we just had to get smaller rocks. After it looked like it was full, we just had to get grains of sand. After it looked like it was full, we had to move from a solid to a liquid and pour it in. And if I was to weigh this, do you not know that this jar got heavier every time we added something to it? Now, you say, Pastor, why are you doing this? I'm going to tell you why I'm doing it right now. This jar represents your wheat. We all have seven days, right? This jar represents everything that you do, and those big rocks that are in there represent your priorities. The smaller rocks, the sand and the water, represents all the other things that we put into a week because we won't want to declare that we're bored. Or maybe we even feel guilty if we don't have something to do. And so we cram more and more and more and more and more into our weeks. But I ask you, is any one of those larger rocks have the word rest on them? Or is it, I've got to run here, I've got to run there, I've got to do this, I've got to do that, I've got to get my movies in, I've got to get my leisure time in, I've got to do this, I've got to do that, I've got to run, I've got to work overtime. You know what, I don't want somebody to think that I'm lazy, so I've got to run here, I've got to run there, even if I don't have to. Most Christians today do not have a rock with rest as a priority. We are cramming more and more and more in. I just read that in 2019, the third cause of death that is increasing, of course, addiction's off the charts, diabetes is off the charts, but the third reason is because of despair caused because of a lack of rest. Despair. We're doing more and more, even Sundays now, which was our Lord's Day, the Sabbath for us as Christians in the New Testament church. Lord was resurrected on a Sunday. Even now, Sundays for even the culture, the community, and those in the church, well, we got to run here, we got to run there, we got to play sports here, we got to play sports there. It's the only day I get to do it, so I'm not going to come to church because it's the only day I get to play golf, and so I'm going to go play on Sunday. All these other things. But we don't have a rest priority in our job. So then, our life looks as ugly as this. And it's messy, Pastor Shaw, like you said. And then we're fatigued, we're frustrated, we're burned out, we're too tired to come to church. If we do come to church, we fall asleep in church. Because it's the only time we sit long enough. So we're tired. We have health issues like we wouldn't believe. And we wonder what is taking place. Our priority list in our week should not look like that. It should look like this.
These rocks represent our priorities, like family, like our job, our calling, our ministry. Okay? We have responsibility. But when we make it this, where is the joy? Where is the joy? Our life, God knew when he gave the Ten Commandments and when he listed number four, he knew we would need to rest. God himself set the example by taking one of the seven days and resting. For me personally, I found out last year what happens when you work seven days a week. I found out what happens to my mood, what happens to my attitude, what happens to my physical strength, what happens to my patience level. I found out what happens when we become irritable. Just like a little child, I heard a parent say it um, just uh, Friday at school with one of their younger little children. My son, he needs a nap. How do you know? Guys, parents, we know when a child needs a nap. Guess what? What kind of example are we setting for our children? I think we know when we need a nap too because our life looks like that, and that's not pretty. That is a mess. That is a mess. And on this Labor Day weekend, let's exchange this jar for this one. When I go to clean this, this hand is going to say, Daddy, we got to clean this because this is her jar. It's the only one that's hers. It's got an H on it. But I wanted a bigger one. So I'm going to have to clean this. I'm going to have to empty this because Mary's going to want to make some jam or something in this mason jar. She's not going to want the rocks left in it. Which one's going to take me longer to clean? This? What a mess. Exactly. And if i got to practice what I preach, you make the mess, you clean it up. So I guess I know who's cleaning this up. But I'm going to have a lot more fun cleaning this one because all I'm going to have to do is take the top off and empty it. Well, church, again, I ask you, which one of these jars defines your week? Which one of these jars defines what you're doing with your life? And it's which one declares, yes, I've got a priority of rest in my life. Genesis 1, as our brother just read. In Genesis 1, God declared, let there be light. And there was light. This is verse 3. Verse 4, and God saw the light and it was good and God divided the light from darkness. When we look at life, and we look at day, we look at night. We all have 24 hours in a day. We all have the same amount of time with light and day and darkness and night. What we do with it is so important. How, how important is rest? Doctors are now saying that adults, we need between 8 and 10 hours. I got some work to do in that department because I've been rolling off a of 5 since I was a teenager. But as my health, as I get older and my health needs a little more time, you know, this is, I'm almost embarrassed to admit this, but Friday night I went to bed at 8.20. And I teased, I teased Mary and I said, if, if I keep going to bed this early, Hannah's going to have to tuck me in. But I found that when I even wrote about it yesterday on Facebook after having a good night's rest, how vital that was. Dawson can tell you, when he saw me in the gym on Thursday, I was worn out. Up most of the night, dealing with stuff, whatever. Coming in, he looked exhausted. I said, let's hit today. Let's not, let's not deadlift, because I don't think I got it in me. But yesterday was completely different. What was the difference? A good night's rest. But church... What do we do? 
the verse that I want to look at before we look at Jesus' instruction that's so important is verse 5 of Genesis chapter 1. God called the light day and the darkness he called night. But this last part, and this is going to be the trend for the, for the six days of creation before he rested on the seventh day, where he took one-seventh of the week and rested and set the example and then told us in Exodus chapter 20, verse 8, to honor the Sabbath and keep it holy in many places in Scripture to rest. Look at what the Bible declares, the second part of verse 5. So the evening and the morning were the first day. Notice evening came first. Most of the time we say we start with the morning and we end at night, but not in God's word. When God brought forth the six days of creation and he said, and it is good, and it is good, and it is good, he said, as each day transitions, he said, so evening came, then morning, and it was good. What is he trying to say? Well, God's mysterious knowledge, which always supersedes man's, the night is more important than the day. Now, not that we shouldn't get up early and seek the Lord's face and all that kind of stuff. What is nighttime? What is this signifying? It's signifying the importance of rest. Nighttime is signifying the importance that if we have rest when our day starts at 6 a.m. or 5 a.m. or 4.30, whatever time your day starts, you're going to be ready to roll. Why? Even before you seek the Lord, you wake up feeling what? Restful, not restless. And then when we look at society in our week, and God even takes it a step further, and he says that one of the seven days must be a day of rest, must be a Sabbath. Now, for most Christians, that's Sunday, okay? Sunday, where we rest. You hear me pray at every, every service. Lord, this is your day. May we keep it holy. May we found honor in you, and, and may we rest in you. And people ask me, well, Pastor, does that mean I can, you know, plant my garden? That mean I can go bowling? Anything that can cause you to get frustrated is not restful. It may be leisure, but it's not restful. Okay, if you're going bowling and you're getting frustrated because you're throwing gutters, you're not resting. Okay, that's not how it works. Okay, if you're out there planting your garden and you're getting frustrated because the gopher comes in there and steals your cukes, that's not restful. Okay, when we rest, we dwell on God. We just simply may do nothing but sit and dwell in the presence of God. We may, you know, because of God's goodness, we may just simply meditate on his word. And then sometimes that gets stressful and say, God, I've got to rest. My mind is over, done with responsibility. Church, honoring the Sabbath and choosing that day and, and resting one-seventh of the week, it's like tithing. It makes no sense to humankind that you're a lot better steward when you give God 10% when you try to do everything with 100 it's very similar. We trust God. He knows what he's doing, and we're going to give a tenth and above, a tithe and an offering to the Lord, and that God is going to do better things with 90% than I could if I was controlling every dime of it. Same type of thing. Well, well, well I can do so much more with seven weeks. No, you trust me, church. People ask me all the time, Pastor, how do you do it? How do you keep this schedule? Because I rest. And last year, when I was rolling seven days a week, I was in the will. I knew I was doing what God asked me to do, and he had to teach me a lesson. I can't thrive for him and do it healthy as a God-fearing husband to my wife and a God-fearing father to my little girl and pastoring this congregation or teaching my students like Jordan at OHCA if I am burnt out. And Pastor Clarence can tell you, I went to him in about April. No, it was, it might have been April. March or April, we had already closed. I said, brother, is there any way we can switch our, I can't do seven days a week anymore. God is convicting me. Is there any way we could switch from Monday being a work day to Friday, so Monday becomes an off day, and I'll teach Wednesday and Friday. He said to me, brother, I think we can make it happen because of the holiday schedule, sports schedule, 
and we really like you to be here. And it sets a good example for us all. And guess what days I'm teaching this year? Wednesdays and Fridays. My Sabbath is Monday because this is the busiest day of the week for me. If you've never tried it, try it. Try teaching, preaching two sermons, teaching two lessons, and leading worship twice. That's fatigue. That's, that's, that gets tiresome. And then visitation in between that. Okay, it's, it's tiresome. This isn't a Sabbath for me. My Sabbath is tomorrow when I can rest. Why does Brandy have my phone? Because I have to rest from the stressors that God's given me. Why is that important? Because I want to set an example for you. I want to follow the example that Christ set and that God set in Genesis. And I know full well, church, that if my priorities is right here and one of these rocks says Sabbath or says rest, I'm going to be just fine. And I believe you will be too. I know a lot of you have physical ailments, emotional ailments. A lot of you are having spiritual consequences because of those problems. I understand that. But I believe the answer is right in the book of Genesis. God has created us to rest. And I believe that is why, unlike any other time where we first talked about morning and then night, well, God says, I'm talking about evening, then I'll talk about morning. Second, he knows, God knows you can't have a thriving day if you're burnt out or if you're sick or if you're unhealthy. This is what, church, your life will look like. This is where I was going. Praise God for his discernment and revelation to me, you know, last year when I realized what was happening. And then, you know what one of the tricks of the devil put in my mind was, well, you've been here 16 years, you're in your 40s now, you got to do more. Well, Lord, the only way I can do more is by going seven days a week. I don't want somebody to think I'm getting lazy. I don't want somebody to think that, that I'm actually bored or I'm resting why not what's the difference between laziness and resting the wisdom of god now if you just sitting home every day sleep until 10 or 11 not doing i mean that if every day is a sabbath then you're in sin because god did tell adam to do what till the fields even before adam he fell they had a responsibility to work genesis 2 check it out if you don't believe me but god knew that if adam was going to be out there tilling the fields he had to be restful to do it you don't believe me? Try hay and see how long that takes you to become tired. I mean, all I got to do is throw it from the wagon to the barn. I can't imagine the life of a farmer every day. Yeah, it takes me an hour to do chores, but guess what? I can't imagine what it's like to do 10 hours in a cattle farm. Well, they got machines. Life on the farm is difficult, especially when a cat has kittens. That gets real difficult on you. Do we not see the point of why we need the rest, why we need the Sabbath? Jesus, at the beginning of his ministry, this is how the Pharisees and Sadducees attempted to get Jesus off his game right at the beginning. Jesus, as we just heard, is the Lord of the Sabbath. He is the fulfillment of the Sabbath. Yes, we are still supposed to come unto him. Matthew 11 says that those that are weak and heavy laden to come unto him and he will give rest. But that does not mean we forego the principle of a Sabbath day. That does not mean that we forego resting ourselves and go, go, go. And every time we think that the jar is full, all we simply do is move from the sand and put water in. We find time somewhere, even for unrighteousness. Even, you know, even now, what are we doing? What are parents doing? We are, we are making our kids so busy. Well, we got, they got softball on Tuesday and Thursday, but on Wednesday and Friday, they got karate. And then on Saturday, you know, they got piano lessons. We got them going just like we're going 24 seven, nonstop around the clock. And when it comes to Sunday, they're busy now, even on Sunday. So that's out the window. And as a culture, what do we see happening? We see our kids so unhealthy today. Unhealthy today. 
we teach Hannah sunshine on Sunday, you're going to do something quiet. We're going to rest. The few hours that we have, it's only about 90 minutes for us, but we're going to rest. And we're not, we're not going to this horse show. We're not going to this person's house. We're not playing a sport. We're not doing a dance thing. Nope, nope, nope. I want her to learn the principle of rest. I want her as a five-year-old and growing, just like I want all our children upstairs, in their jar we call life, in the week of a life, to have a priority rock that says rest across it. I long for that. When I work with students every day, they feel like there's so much pressure. Pressure to get good grades. Pressure to get, you know, uh, 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 affirmed from their parents. Pressure to do well on the basketball court. Pressure to do well here. Pressure to do well. All this pressure. Well, do you ever get a break? Do you ever take time to recharge your battery? Some even say to me, well, if I'm not up and going by 630, I get yelled at if I don't have breakfast going. Some of our students cook breakfast in the morning. What day do you rest? Do you know the principle of rest, the principle of the Sabbath? Not only in the world, which I understand because it's the world, but even in the church now. It's of little importance to rest. We don't conduct business on Sundays. People say, Pastor, why don't we just take a Sunday night and do our business meeting? Not under my watch. Sunday belongs to the Lord. We'll conduct business some other time. Like I said, anything that's frustrating, I don't want to do on the Lord's Day. I don't want to do on my personal Sabbath. I want my mind to rest. I don't want to become weary and well-doing. I want us to look at the life that Jesus said. Well, here, as I said, the Pharisees, Sadducees, and all those guys, especially after Jesus had chosen Matthew, the Levi, the tax collector, to be his disciple, the question about money and the question about the Sabbath came into play because they were looking to convict Jesus of heresy. And they looked at him and they asked the question, about healing and eating on the Sabbath and working on the Sabbath and ministering. And then we're going to get down to the key verse, which is verse 27, which sums up this whole message this morning. Now it happened that he, this is Mark chapter 2, verse 23, now it happened that he, Christ, went through the grain fields on the Sabbath. And as, as they went, his disciples began to plight the heads of grain. And the Pharisees said to Jesus, look, why do they do what is not lawful on the Sabbath? So some of you may be saying, well, Pastor, this sounds legalistic to you. No, it's not legalistic. Legalistic would be if I came out and said, if you don't rest on Sunday, if you don't follow every principle on Sunday, if we just come in here and go through the motions, all that kind of thing, and you do not, then you're not saved. No, that's not what I'm saying. Or if you don't come to church every single Sunday, you're not. That's not what we're saying at all. That's not what the point is. The point is, is that we can live a healthier life physically and spiritually if we understand the importance of rest from a non-legalistic perspective. They were trying to catch Jesus in heresy. Why do they do what is not lawful on the Sabbath? Could you imagine these Pharisees, these religious people telling the creator of the Sabbath that he's wrong or that his disciples at this time were wrong? Verse 25, but he said to them, have you never read what David did when he was in need and hungry? He and those with him. How they went to the house of God in the days of Abathar, the high priest, and ate the showbread, which is not lawful to eat except for the priest, and also gave some to those who were with him. Here, Jesus steps away from legalism. He steps away from the principle of just simply a day. And as we're going to find out here in a second, why did he do this? Because the Sabbath was not made for God. The Sabbath was made for us. Resting was made for us. There are times in which there is a need. There are times in which we have to Maybe quickly, just like today with the ministry team, you solve a quick problem. But there are times in which people will come in here, as we saw last Sunday, 
with a hiker on the Appalachian Trail who was in great need. We didn't turn them away and say, well, it's the Sabbath. Sorry, come back to us on Tuesday. When we open, we minister to the need in the moment. It is important to know this isn't meant to be legalistic. This isn't meant to be driven into a place that we're just trying to come up with something to justify why we're doing something on a Sunday or why we're doing something on our Sabbath. Church, this is about rest. This is about the importance of how we can have a life that is filled with health, both spiritual and physical, and not chaotic and crazy. At the same time of ministering, whether that's praying for the sick or feeding the hungry or giving a ride to someone who's hitchhiking. Verse 27, and he said to them, the Sabbath was made for man. When God rested on the seventh day, okay, and this is, at, this is in chapter 1 of Genesis, and it was all good, and then God rested God was already thinking of the interest of Adam before he even breathed life into Adam's nostrils in Genesis chapter 2 and told him to work the fields. God was already creating the rest Sabbath day, not because God was exhausted, not because God needed to go gather his thoughts, but God knew he would need to set the example for mankind to follow, and God also knew Jesus Christ would be coming because God is all-knowing, Jesus is the Alpha and Omega, and that Jesus would be the fulfillment of the restful one. And I look at it and I see so many people not at ease, not healthy, spiritually their, their, their wheels are just out, all, out, of, out of whack, they're off track somewhere, and I see all this going on. And we hear the invitation, those that are weak and heavy laden, come unto the Lord and give rest. But why is it someone will come, they'll feel better for a month or two, be, and then they'll be right back in that same boat because they did not learn the principle of rest. Yes, God forgave them. God brought them out of a difficult situation. God recharged their batteries just like Jesus said he would do and when, he, when he invites us in Matthew 11 to come unto him. But why do we want to keep making the same mistake over and over and over again? Remember, a conviction is nothing more than a strong desire until it's tested. I remember talking to my wife about how I was feeling in the winter time, where that was just going seven days a week. And I remember her saying to me, how important is a day of rest to you? Because as I was going seven days a week, it wasn't just impacting me. It was impacting, of course, my wife. And, of course, Hannah was with me on those Mondays. But we didn't have that family time. We didn't have that rest. We did not have that time of me just sitting out under the maple tree resting. And if it truly was a conviction, I had to have a conversation with my brother. If this is truly a conviction... You're going to have to have a conversation with your maker. That's how he's wired us. And Jesus makes it clear right here, guys, as we're almost finished. He said to them, the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. It was made for our benefit to rest. It is holy to rest. It's unholy to be lazy. But the principle is I am going to rest I am going to rest at night. I am going to rest one day of the week. And guess what? Every seven years, we're supposed to take even a longer rest. If you look at the Old Testament, which is the principle behind a personal sabbatical or a professional sabbatical. Mary and I are always blessed when I share this story, and I usually share it every year. When we first came to Maine, our hay farmer, the Baileys, at Andover, it was such a bad year, no rain, we had to go to South Paris to get our hay. And I met a farmer there by the name of David Shaw. And I called several different farmers, and they were all like the farmers in Andover, no hay, no hay. Uh, we were talking about what are we going to do? We're going to have to go back to Maryland or Pennsylvania. And down there, hay was running $8 a bale, and we had no money. All right, this was tough, our first season here. And uh, 
He says, yeah, I got hay. I'll sell it to you at 350 a bale. And I asked him, I said, sir, how do you have hay and no one else does? And I told him who I was, and he knew my wife. He was the mailman down there. He watched my wife grow up, lived right down the street from where she grew up, East Oxford Road and South Paris. And he said, I believe in the Lord very much, just like you do. And here at Shaw Farms, we rest our fields every seventh year. My grandfather did it, my father did it, and I'm doing it. And our fields are healthy because they're not worn out and burned out. The nutrients are not starving. And I've got hay because I rest my fields. And I rotate what pastures I use. So the pastures you don't use on that seventh year, you just let them grow. Yep, I let them grow. And the following spring, I'll come in and cut it down. But during that whole harvest, I just let it grow that seventh year. And then I move over to that paddock, and then I move to that paddock, and, and I rotate him around, but we rest. Every field rests. And you know what else he told me? I rest our animals, too. The principle we get. People will say, Pastor, can we come up and ride on Sunday? No, you can't. Our animals rest on Sunday. Very important. God makes that clear in his word. But as we finish, the Sabbath was made for man. Are we using it? How important is it to you? Is it a conviction? Will you continue to try to cram things in? Okay, if you do, I'm going to say to you, remember the jar when you come into my office. Or I'm going to say to you, have you put rest as a priority? Well, I can't. I can't do that. You can keep putting all this stuff in here, but you can't do this. Think about that. This weekend, Labor Day is all about rest. So we don't have labor, child labor, all those things prior to Labor Day becoming a holiday. Or people working all these hours without overtime pay. Look at what you even do tomorrow. Of all the federal holidays, Labor Day, people usually still work and claim those eight hours for vacation time later on. But we all know vacation is not a Sabbath. How many of you have told me here, you know what, Pastor? I needed a vacation after I went on vacation because I burned it every day. We were constantly moving. Very little rest there. So don't think you need it. That's, that's what I used to think. Well, we'll just get away for three days. Vacation is not Sabbath. Vacation is not rest as God defined it. You know it as well as I do. And Mary can tell you, you know, we, when we're out on the road, especially in the, on the New Jersey Turnpike and places like that, and where you're just sitting there, sometimes it's real easy to lose patience. That is not rest. I'm not making my wife feel better as she's sitting over in the shotgun seat, and I'm just frustrated because we're not moving. And then, you, then your temperature gauge starts to inch up a little bit. Uh-oh, we're overheating here. What's wrong? And then it's like, why are we sitting here? We've been sitting here an hour. That's not Sabbath rest. All right? That's not a good place to be. Lastly, therefore, the Son of Man is also the Lord of the Sabbath. Jesus never took away the Sabbath. All he did was fulfill it. The principle of the Sabbath is still there. In American history, even when we were an agrarian culture, Sunday the farmers would rest, other than the cattle farms, just simply because of the milk the cows had. My grandfather was a tobacco farmer, and Sunday was a very important day. The only day my father said that they did not work from sunup to sundown on that farm was Sunday because it belonged to the Lord, and, and my grandparents believed they got a lot more out of their children on the tobacco farm with resting and working six days than they did if they went at it seven days. It's a principle of Scripture. And I can tell you, they had a lot more daily responsibilities than we do. You say, Pastor, why can you say that? Try going out to the outhouse when it's 30 below zero. Or try having the flu when you have an outhouse to get to. Or try, I watch my wife, it takes her 45 minutes 
when she drives the horses and she puts the team together. Could you imagine waking up? What do we do? We stay in the car and push a button and it starts for us. Could you imagine getting up, gearing up, and going out and just getting your team together of horses together for an hour just so you can ride the horse for three, three hours to get to work at the mill or a blacksmith? Oh, I don't have a clean shirt. Well, let me, don't, don't throw it in the washer. You can't do a short cycle. We don't have enough time for that. Let me take it out and put it in that tub and let me scrub it for you. The inconveniences we, I mean, Lord, forgive us when we want. They were hard workers too. But they had a conviction of rest. They also had a 99% marriage rate. You guys know in 2015, the first time in American history since it was recorded, the life expectancy actually dropped. Top three reasons, addiction, diabetes, rest, or lack of rest, despair is what they called it. Body just worn out. Taking a pill to wake you up, taking a pill to go to sleep. Drinking a whole gallon of coffee to keep you awake. So exhausted. One of these days, I'm going to get a super soaker and put it up here. When somebody falls asleep, go. But I know what it is. And he said to them, the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. Therefore, the Son of Man is also the Lord of the Sabbath. Which jar defines you? The middle one? Or is it the little one that has a list of priorities that are defined by each rock? And one of them says rest. Or one of them says Sabbath and keep it holy. Which one? This kind of looks like the set of lungs to the smoker, right? Twenty years. You ever seen that in science class? Black is the television. I don't want this for any of you. This is the road I was going down. I don't want that. I want this. And the next time someone comes to you and says, what are the priorities in life? God, my wife, my family, my calling, and rest. If it's important to God to take one day of the week, I pray it's important to us for such a time as this. Father, I thank you for your word today. Lord, you know where each person is. You know what happens when we get to the weekend or we get to Sunday. You know what happens when we're in the car and frustrated or we get irritable with our kids. The same way parents know when their child needs a nap or needs to go to bed for the night. Lord, we know too. We know we're burnt out. We know we become weary and well-doing. We know we have health issues. Our body does all these things to let us know. I pray, Lord, that each believer here on this Labor Day Sunday, 2020, will begin to have rest as a priority in their life. But Lord, as we saw with this object lesson today, that we can cram more into a week. Yep, the rocks may get a little smaller, or the small pebbles may become sand, sand may become water, but it will fit in at some expense. Lord, we get excited about nine of the Ten Commandments, but the fourth one in our culture today gets overlooked day in and day out. And that, of course, is to remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. And Lord, you said in Genesis 1, as you were creating everything from day one to day six and then rested, you said, then evening, then morning came, and it was good. And then you told Adam to work the fields and to remember the rest. Then you told Moses in Exodus 20 when the Ten Commandments were given by you 
to rest and keep that day holy. Jesus, later, roughly 1,700 years later, you would say that the Sabbath was made for man, not for God. And Lord, you are the Lord of that Sabbath. Lord, I pray no one here have a legalistic attitude. For some have to work on Sunday because of their job. Maybe they're a first responder or a security office. But Lord, we can, whether it's like my case, is a Monday. Maybe someone else here, it would be a Saturday, the original Sabbath. Or maybe, Lord, it's a Wednesday. The point is we take a day to rest. The point is we strive for eight hours of sleep at least so that we can rest. Lord, if there's someone here today and they know that their life is represented by this taller jar on the altar table that's filled with wet sand, small rocks, big rocks that have no rest priority in it, and their life is out of tune because they're simply tired. Even Lord in doing good things, they've become weary. Maybe there's someone here, Lord, they have health issues. Maybe their doctor recently asked them, how are you sleeping? Are you getting enough rest? And maybe you responded to that doctor by saying, well, what's rest? What's sleep? We kind of laugh it off in our culture. Lord, if that's somebody here or somebody watching, I pray they'll step out right now and come to this altar or write in the comment section on Facebook, I need prayer with this because that's me. Or Lord, maybe there's somebody here and they've never heard this principle of rest before. They never realized that rest was like tithing, that they could do more in six days for the Lord and resting one day than going at it seven days just like God can do more with someone's finances when they, when they give 10% to the Lord and, and a steward of 90%. Very similar principles, Lord. But they're from you. Similar to prayer, the importance of prayer. We walk by faith and not by sight. If that's you today, you had no idea this was even a, a principle of Scripture that is still for today, I invite you to come and say, God, help me change my schedule. If that's you, come. If you're here and you're afraid of what someone might say if you said, rest is important to me and I'm going to get rid of some things off of my plate so I can begin to rest personally and with my family. If that's you, I invite you to come. By coming, you're going to say to the Lord that rest is now a priority in your life. And lastly, if you're here and you get too much rest, maybe you've become like the sluggard. And you're the complete opposite end of this. God has says, says something about laziness in Scripture as well. God wants to help you discipline your schedule so you can have a holy amount of rest without becoming lazy. If that's you, come. Guys, come talk to the Lord right now. I don't want you to continue living like this tall jar. It's not going to work. You eventually will hit a brick wall. You will eventually collapse. You will eventually forsake the fellowship because you're too tired and need to do something more for fun because you're so stressed during the week. The thing that the Lord says for us to do is forsake not the fellowship of the brethren together, even more so as the day approaches. If you're watching on Facebook right now and you didn't come to church today because you were too tired, I pray you'll kneel wherever you are and talk to the Lord and say, God, help me. Help change my schedule because I need the brothers and sisters of Christ. I need to be there, that taste of heaven. 
Sometimes technology bails us out, but that'll fail us eventually. Minister, let God minister to you today. God is speaking to your heart. Please come while there's time. been so gracious has won my heart at last sitting at the feet of Jesus Can mortals be more blessed than he, my sins and sorrows? And when weary I find sweet rest. Sitting at the feet of my Jesus, there I love to weep and pray. What life from His fullness I gather. And comfort every day. Bless me, O oh my Savior, bless me. As I sit down at thy feet, O oh, look down in love upon me. See thy 
life is so sweet Give me, Lord, give me the mind of Jesus Make me holy as he been with Jesus. You is all thy righteousness. Give me, Lord, the mind of my Jesus. Me holy as he is. May I prove I've been with Jesus. He is all my righteousness. May I prove I've been with my Jesus. He is all my righteousness. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Lord God, I pray for those, for I believe there are others here that are having difficulty uh, sleeping, Lord, having difficulty resting, having difficulty disciplining, time in their schedule, Lord. I just pray, Lord, that your grace will be sufficient. I pray, Lord, that you'll be merciful. I pray, Lord, that we will look at the importance of your word and why you rested in the first place on the seventh day at creation. And why, Lord, if we have a restful evening, the day will be powerful. We don't understand that, Lord. Most likely our evenings will not be restful and our days will be powerless. Help us, Jesus. Help us, Jesus. Lord, to be restful. In Jesus' name. We'll stand and we're going to close with a song. I'm learning to live. I'm learning to live. I'm learning to lean on Jesus. Finding more power than I. Before I pray, I just want to ask you a question. 
Do you truly believe you can do more in six days with resting one than you can with a complete seven day week? Very similar. Do you believe God can do more with your finances by giving him 10% than by you controlling all 100%? Very similar principles. Very similar questions. But I pray they have the same answer. Yes. To the former and the latter. So I can live a full life unto the Lord in these last days. Father, thank you for today. I thank you for prayer time. I thank you for Sunday school time. Thank you for worship time. Thank you for Genesis 1, Mark 2. Thank you for this prayer time today. But most importantly, Father, we say thank you for sending your son Jesus, the Sabbath, the rest, to come and to die on the cross for our sin, to take our sin away, even the sin of forgetting to rest. Lord God, I pray we remember how awesome you are and the fact that our sins are forgiven because our faith is in you. Bless us now as we go, Lord. Give us travel and mercies as we head home. Watch over us. Protect us. But, Lord, may we remember that today is your day, so may we keep it holy. May we be found resting in you in everything that we say and do. Bring us back safely tonight, Lord, to study your word and to worship you. But ultimately, I pray, Lord, as we continue to draw closer to one another in times of prayer, study, devotion, and worship such as this here today. More importantly, I pray, Lord, that we will continue to draw closer to you. For your word declares in James 4, 8, that if we draw nigh or draw near unto you, you will draw near unto us. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. God bless you all tonight. Men's and women's group at 5, evening service at 6.